change your circumstance It doesn't matter what your problem is or what you're going through If you can change the sound Hello and welcome to this third installment of the series on trying to understand what it means to obey the gospel. We've talked about what is the gospel. We have also talked about how to respond to the gospel. I want to take your thoughts a bit further in this lesson and talk to you about the church. Whenever we talk about the gospel and we talk about responding to the gospel, we of necessity have to talk about the church. First, let's dispel some misconceptions. I understand that when we talk about the church, we are certainly not talking about some material building. We're not talking about some denominational group. We're not talking about some sect. We're really just talking about the people who belong to Jesus Christ. If we can get this concept in mind, we'll be well on our way to better understanding what it means to be in the church. In Acts, the second chapter, the Bible records a message spoken by the Apostle Peter concerning the identity of Jesus Christ. This was the day of Pentecost. It was a great annual Jewish feast. But on this particular Pentecost, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter is recorded by Luke to have talked about Jesus. He declared Jesus as Lord and Christ. When the people in the audience heard this message, they were cut to the heart. Their conscience was stricken because they found themselves guilty in the sight of the Holy God. They asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? They wanted to know what to do about their sin condition. They wanted to know what they could do to be free from the guilt of crucifying the Son of the living God, whom God the Father had now made Lord of Christ. This is what we read in Acts chapter 2 and verse 37. Peter had a ready answer for them. He said, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, as we read a bit further in Acts chapter number 2, on down to the end of the chapter, verse number 47, the Bible says, And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. Well, there's our key word, church. What else do we read this term? Well, we read it in Matthew chapter 16. The context is verses 13 through 18, where Jesus asked his disciples, what were people saying about him? Who did the people think he was? Various answers were given until Peter made the statement, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered Peter and said that this Revelation did not come to Peter of his own accord, nor from other people on the planet. But this was something that God revealed to him. And then Jesus went on to say, Upon this rock I will build my church. The rock that Jesus referred to was the truth that he is, the Son of God. Based on the identity of who Jesus is, and the authority that comes with that identity, he said, I will build my church. Well, the word church really means the community of Christ. The Greek word ekklesia has the idea of the called out ones. But when we refer to the church of Christ, we're talking about those individuals that have been called out of the world system into allegiance to Christ, into the family of God. Uh, they are recognized as the community of Christ. These individuals are the ones that Jesus said he would establish. Well, in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, the Bible is referring again to that same community. Only in that case, the Lord is adding to that community those that are being saved. Now, this is very important as well. 
When we talk about the church, we are talking about not just the community of Christ, but we're talking about people that are in the process of being saved. Yes, the church is the saved. We are saved by the sacrifice of Jesus for our sins. Jesus came into this world to pay for the sins of the world. He took on the sin of the entire world, and his death paid for those sins. He was killed on the cross, crucified for our sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4 teaches us that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he was raised. Thank God, hallelujah, he was raised. Because when Jesus was raised from the dead, it proved that God the Father was satisfied with the price Jesus paid to ransom us from our sin. This is why Jesus' resurrection is so important. In fact, in Romans chapter 4 and verse number 25, the Bible lets us know how important that resurrection is. Yes, he was raised for our justification. He was raised. God was satisfied with the price he paid, his very life for the sins of the world. Because of that, we can know that his death, his sacrifice, was that which was the ultimate price paid and accepted for our sins. Therefore, we can be forgiven by the blood of Christ. In the sacrifice of Christ, we find forgiveness of all of our sins. And therefore, we are saved. You see, the church consists of those that are saved. In Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, Jesus said to preach this message, this good news to the entire world. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And yet, in Acts 2 and verse 47, the Bible said, And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. So we are saved in the church and we are being saved in the church. Let me explain it this way. We as Christians, we who are members of the church, are not yet experiencing the final result of salvation. No, my friends, the final result is when the Lord comes back again and takes us with him. We read in the books of First and Second Thessalonians about this. The idea is that we are going to be caught up with the Lord and will forever be with the Lord. The full salvation, if you will, the full experience of salvation is when we are in the eternal kingdom with Jesus in the presence of God. And so the church is the saved and those that are being saved. We can praise God for being in the church. It is so important to be in the church. This again is what the Bible means in Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. Those that were being saved are those that are added to the church. Well, this brings up another important point. We are added to the church. We are added to the church by the Lord himself. And so when we think about this in scriptural understanding, no one really joins the church. It's not something you join. It's something we are added to by the Lord himself. When we're baptized into Christ, we come into relationship with the Lord. In Acts chapter number 2 and verse 47, actually beginning at verse 38 through verse 47, we read about baptism and the end result. There is the forgiveness of sins. There is the gift of the Holy Spirit. There is being added to the church. When we read in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, we find Jesus talking about baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our baptism puts us in union with the Godhead. And this is another way of understanding the church. 
those that are in union with the Godhead, those that are in the community of Christ. This shows the essentiality of the church. Sadly, in our day and time, there are those who are under the misunderstanding that the church is an option. There are those who think that you become saved, if you will, and then you find a church to join. But this is to misunderstand the scriptures. No, my friends, we are saved, we are added to the church, we are given the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven, all at the same time. And as we continue to live in this life in relationship with the Lord, we are being saved. We are heading to the full experience of salvation that we will have in the final day. Forever then shall we be with the Lord. And so the church is important. In fact, it's essential. It certainly is not an option. It's not something that we can throw off and do without. This is another point to be remembered. The church is also called the body of Christ. We find this in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. The church is then the spiritual body of Christ. In Ephesians chapter number 1, verses 22 and 23, we find that to say the church is to say the body, and to say the body is to say the church. We must be a part of the church, and we only are made a part of it by the addition of Jesus himself upon our responding to the gospel in faith, in repentance, in baptism. All of this is so important when we consider the term the church. Here's something else to keep in mind. When we talk about the church, we are also talking about the kingdom, God's kingdom. God's rule, God's authority, the kingdom of heaven, if you will, the kingdom of God. These are all ways to refer to the same thing. You see, in the church, we come under the rule of God through Christ Jesus. He becomes our Lord. And to be under his rule means that we live our lives in accordance to what he teaches. And so what is the church? It is the body of Christ. It's the community of Christ. It's the body of the saved. It is the body of those being saved. It is that spiritual body that we are added to when we are baptized in water for the forgiveness of our sins and to be recipients of the Holy Spirit. It is essential. It is that which the Lord has designed for our salvation for our edification, for our redemption. Yes, you must be in the church, and only Jesus adds us to the church. I hope that you will decide how important the church is to you by surrendering to the gospel, by believing that Christ died for your sins, by turning your heart to him in repentance, by submitting to a burial in water, known as baptism. At that point, all your sins will be washed away. There's not a sin in your life that will remain after the waters of baptism. It is all washed away. And here's an added plus, an added blessing. According to 1 John chapter number 1, beginning at verse 7, throughout 1 John chapter 2, around verse number 2, we learn that in the community of Christ, in the church, if we do sin and we confess that sin, own up to it, the blood of Christ continues to wash away our sins. This is a part of what it means to be those who are being saved, as well as those that are already saved. There's no greater blessing than to be a part of the church, the community of Christ, the body of Christ, the spiritual body of Christ, the church of Christ. I hope that you'll decide you want to respond to the gospel and allow the Lord to add you to his church. And I hope you'll decide to do that even today. May God bless you toward that end. I hope you'll tune in again to the next lesson in this series 
which will focus on living as a Christian. May God bless you in your spiritual journey. What a change since the Lord came in. You rearranged everything in your life that was oh so wrong. Now you living a good life, girl. You got it going on, but hold on. I remember when you used to be in the streets, club hopping, cussing, fighting, drinking, non stopping. Not even thinking about the consequences. Now you walk around with a smile on your face that looks like it can't be erased. That you and your church and your family thing, this new life you say you can't explain it. One question is driving me crazy. Tell me now, how can I obtain it? I gotta know, how can I receive it? Amazing grace, wow, I can't believe it.